Hi everyone, Eric at FMLS here with a little bit of a tip and a trick in Matrix talking about custom exports. So if you have a search that you frequently do or a report that you run that you typically will kind of download and put into Excel into a spreadsheet perhaps and you're some you're uh, you know doing that fairly frequently you might want to set up a custom export so that once you run that data maybe every week or every month or however frequently you run this report or this export you don't have to kind of reinvent the wheel every single time you do it so how we're going to do this um, there's two ways we can do this I'm going to show you kind of both uh, but the first one that I want to go into is I'm going to hover over my matrix up at the top of the matrix tabs and go to the bottom go to settings click there and from my settings menu is custom exports right now it's the third one from the bottom down there I'm gonna highlight it just to point it out so I'm just gonna click custom exports and a screen comes up where I can move up move down obviously there's nothing to move up or down in this box to the left but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click add export first over to the right and what I'm choosing now <clears throat> excuse me is uh, first I'm going to choose to name this export notice the gold background on this field so that indicates that it is a required field so for instance maybe I am doing this export because I'm going to use the data as um, I don't know let's just say mailing labels now of course you might be familiar with how to do mailing labels outside of the realist type tax data um, and honestly this wouldn't necessarily work I'm just kind of using a random label to fill in here up at the top but after you name your custom export you're gonna choose the columns or the uh, data pieces okay from the listings that you want in your export so maybe you want the acres so I'll select that on the left move that over uh, number of fireplaces I, I'm just kind of choosing things at random but you get the idea over on the left is presented to you every single field in a listing you can select that move it over to the right once it's on the right in your export fields column you can move it up or down the bearing here is in your export if you kind of imagine looking at a spreadsheet right column A is on the left over to column Z then you go into double A you know and on and on and on so the higher it is in this list the further to the left it's going to be in your data so there's column A is acres column B is number of fireplaces column C would be whatever's below that so moving things up and down over on the right side of this column indicates how far left how far right do those columns uh, are they going to be represented in your data when you export that to Excel okay and of course notice in the middle here add and remove our choices so if you accidentally misclick something over here on the left side and move it over you can highlight it on the right click remove and kick it back out all right down below if you don't want to scroll endlessly through this really big list of fields you can just search for something so for instance if you also want pool features uh, you can just type in the word pool in the search box down below click on pool features then add it over right whatever you're kind of looking for you can use that search box below the left column to pare down to only the fields that you're looking for below that you can choose to include column names okay because right now with none selected it's just gonna be column a is gonna be a bunch of numbers and it won't necessarily have the word acres at the top of that column I would want to include the name of that column at the very top okay separator comma separated values you might have heard of what's called a CSV file that's what it means comma separated value so I would encourage you more than likely that you're gonna default to a comma separator but you can also use a tab instead it's another uh, you know just an alternative to the comma really no big difference between the two but once you have your uh, definition here your export definition set up you're defining what fields you want in the order from left to right i.e. top to bottom that you want you're gonna click Save at the bottom 
And so now you come back here, right? So you can continue to add more. And now that we have move up and move down, still with only one here, it's not going to do anything, but you get the idea. Once you get more exports, you can move them up or down. Honestly, there's no real bearing on whether you're moving it up or down. It's literally just what order do you want it in? Uh, maybe you want the more important ones at the top. Uh, really just, again, no real direct bearing. Once you have uh, a definition in here, your custom export, you can go back and edit that previously made. So maybe, you know, next week you realize, oh, I forgot that column that I need. You can edit it here. You can copy an export. If maybe, maybe uh, you've got two neighboring subdivisions and you do custom exports on both. But in one subdivision, you do it this way. And on the other subdivision, you do it just slightly different. Well, rather than just completely reinventing the wheel, you can just copy that first one, then edit the copy and make just that small change right? Obviously, you can delete one. Maybe I don't need to do this anymore. I can highlight it and click delete there. All right. So in any event, once you've managed your definitions here, your custom exports, you can click done. And now it's set up, right? So how this is going to work is if I come back to a search, okay? So once you run a search, what you can do is you can select your properties that you want to export. Now I just went ahead and clicked on the top box to select all on this page. Okay, but you do also have the all page. Of course, you can kind of cherry pick the ones over to the left, right? Whatever you decide is appropriate. Once you select the ones that you want, down at the bottom in the action button bar, you see the button down there for export. You can click on that. Now you've got a choice in here for your export. So I had called it mailing labels. Forgive me, I had to look for it there. Because you've got other exports as well that are your grids that you've set up. Right, You can export a grid setup. So this is the mailing labels that I had typed in. So I can select that and then I can export that into, as I previously defined, a comma separated value. Right. So that's how you can kind of set up that export ahead of time so that then when you go to the search, you select your properties, you can go down to export at the bottom, select it in this box and click export. But notice I have the button for edit custom export over on the right. If I click on that, it kind of steps me in here. So maybe it's only at this point that I'm like, oh, no, wait, I want to kind of modify this one. I can call it um, reactivate, I, you know, just whatever you want to call it reconfigure this and you can edit that on the fly okay so that's just some thoughts on custom exports and where you can go to kind of set that up so that you don't have to kind of reinvent the wheel every week like i said if you're doing a very frequent job at exporting certain data bits from you know parts of town uh price points, you know, whatever it is you're kind of pulling from the database to run reports on in Excel and, you know, export and what have you, you can do it this way. And that might make your life a little easier going forward once you set that definition up in the system. For any questions or problems, you can always reach out to the customer service department. They are at 404-255-8660, option one. They're available to you Monday through Friday, nine to six, and Saturday, nine to five.